everyone, and welcome to the Paint Along After Dark. <laughs> I was going to call this episode the Paint Along Pajama Party, but I realized that I don't actually have any funny or cute pajamas, so I'm just, all I have is nerdy t-shirts, so that's what I usually wear. Um, you guys probably can't tell, but um, I am filming this late into the night. I usually film my Paint Alongs during the day, during regular business hours. But it just so happens that I have a painting due tomorrow for the Bad Apple Artist Collective, and I got a little bit of a late start on it. Um, I'm sure there's some other procrastinators out there, so you can relate to pulling all-nighters when you have a deadline. Um, so anyway, I thought it might be fun to uh, film this at night. I know you can't tell it's at night since I have my giant studio lights up as usual. Um, but it is. It is actually um, past my usual bedtime. And it's Saturday night, and I will be uh, at, in, in my studio working. So if you guys want a career in art, this is the real story right here. You're going to spend a lot of weekends in your studio alone painting. But we love it, don't we? All right, so let's jump into the questions. I think I've got everything I need and ready to go, um, including my <laughs> very classy Modelo Michelada. That's how I party on Saturday night. All right, so let's get to this painting, and I will start in on these questions. So a little backstory on this piece before I continue working on it. The theme this month for the auction is spirit animals. And when I thought about spirit animals, one of my favorite influences came up, and that is Princess Mononoke, the uh, Studio Ghibli film. And um, it's one of my favorites. I haven't seen it in a while, but I, it just kind of sticks with you. I think all of um, Miyazaki's movies have that magic. And if that's not about spirit animals, then I don't know what is. So anyways, um, I started off by doing this uh, little rough thumbnail. It's kind of big for a thumbnail, but um, I usually like to, I kind of like to draw really rough sometimes and then um, refine afterwards. Sometimes I don't show you guys this step, but I often do this. So what I did in this case to speed up the process is I just did this thumbnail um, to scale. It's um, the right dimensions of uh, my eight by 10 uh, board. And I just wanted to kind of figure out where I wanted the shapes and things like that. And so then what I did was I blew up the uh, thumbnail to an 8x10 size. And then I used tracing paper to sketch on top of it. So that's where this sketch came from. Um, so I did this little sketch already. And then what I did was I um, made a photocopy of the, the sketch. And then... Da -da. Oh, wait, haha, <laughs> it's under here. I hid it from myself. And then I'm using that, the photocopy, to transfer it to my board. So I'm a little ways in already. I'm currently uh, finishing um, my transfer, and then I will show you guys um, the, the rest of the painting process. Okay, so now you're all, you're all caught up to where I am. All right, so I left off last time with uh, quite a few questions I didn't finish, so I'm just going to pick up where I left off last time. And my first question comes from Lisa B. And Lisa B, you also had um, uh, Jane W asked a very, very similar question. Um, so I'm going to be answering this uh, for both of you guys. So Lisa asks, hi Leilani, I have recently started advertising my art for sale. Congratulations, I'm so happy for you, that's awesome. Um, and within the last year, I was wondering what uh, I was wondering what your thoughts are on making and selling prints of my artwork this early on. P.S. I have been following you for the last few years, and your videos played a large role in me getting the confidence up to start selling my work. You are inspirational. Thank you very much, Lisa, A.K.A. Wooly Butt Designs. I remember you, Wooly Butt. How could anyone forget Wooly Butt? <laughs> Anyways, congratulations. Good for you. I'm so proud of you that you got yourself, you know, out there. You guys, that is seriously, that's the hardest part, you know, jumping in the deep end. Just getting yourself out there is the toughest step. And once you do that, the rest of it is just, is gravy. But anyway, um, Jane W. also asked about making prints and she was asking about um, sites like Redbubble and Society6, which I already talked about a little bit or making your own prints. Um, and this, again, I, I have this answered on my FAQ page, but I, I get it uh, asked about it a lot, so I thought that I would just go ahead and kind of respond to it. Um, so this is kind of a personal preference. It, every artist is a little bit different. Um, 
And again, this is what I said on my FAQ page. If you guys want to read it there too, you can. Um, but it depends like what quality you want. Um, a lot of artists, it depends on like what medium they work in. So if they work in watercolor, they may want to print on watercolor paper, which is difficult to print at home unless you have a really, really um, fancy printer. Um, I, I paint in acrylics, so I like to use papers that are really color saturated and have a slight sheen to it to kind of emulate the acrylic paint. So you might want to do, first of all, do a little research as to what quality of prints that you're looking for. What kind of papers do you want? You know, what do they cost? Um, and how much time you want to spend working on it. Um, so the, the great thing about Society6, Redbubble, um, all those sites that make prints for you is you don't have to really do anything at all. They do all the shipping. They take care of that. They print it. They handle the customer service. Um, and that's all, that's all really great. So a lot of artists don't want to spend too much time doing that part. So for, if you're in that boat, you're like, I'd rather just keep making art. I don't want to handle the sales and that. And Society6, I found, actually gives you a, a decent cut of your prints. Um, you can set your own price. I think Redbubble you can too. I haven't personally used Redbubble, but I think it is a very similar situation. So you can decide what profit you want. So that's kind of great. Um, though, for me, I have I, I do a little bit of both. I'm sort of a, a print jack-of-all-trades, if you will. Um, so for large bulk orders like when i have a big show or something like that i use um a local printer um in san francisco that i like and they do them for me and i i you know i do all the the boards and bags and all that but um that costs me more than when i home print so i also home print um i use um the epson style uh geez Sorry, I'm having a brain fart about the name of it. It's the Epson Stylus R3000. Okay, I think that's right. I think you can see from here. So it is a large format photo printer. It prints up to 13 by 19, which is great. Um, it retails for about $700, um, but for me, it's paid for itself many, many times over, so it's great. Um, and so I can print on demand, which is nice when I, so that way, I don't have to have um, tons and tons of prints in stock because um, that's what happens if you have to if you order them in bulk if you want to do them that way uh, with an outside printer you usually want to buy a lot of them because it's cheaper the more you have made right so I definitely recommend Epson printers um, some of my bad apple friends they've had some good luck with um, uh, Canon I think it is I have not used Canon I prefer Epson so I stand by Epson Epson quality prints are incredible. My printer happens to have the eight ink cartridge print system. So it has um, like pure magenta. It has two different types of black, matte black, shiny black. So I get really, if you guys have bought my prints, you've seen, I'm really happy with them. And I've tried a lot of printers, a lot of printing services, and I'm kind of a stickler about my prints. So I really like them. Um, I use, um, Ilford, Ilford, I-L-F-O-R-D, um, printer paper or photo paper. And I like the um, satin finish or luster. I like both of those. I don't tend to like glossy. I think it's just a little bit too reflective. Um, and so you, with that said, though, again, you guys want to do your own research about paper. The Epson papers, Epson brand papers are also really good. Um, but you want to pick the paper that matches the kind of artwork that you're doing. Um, so again, this is kind of personal preference because I would say that the, the profit margin is the biggest if you print them yourself. However, there is a large investment involved. The ink is very expensive. Um, each cartridge runs me um, like $17 and there's eight of them. So I have to fill them a lot. But again, it's still cheaper than having a uh, like a printing service do it typically. Um, or then Society6 and Redbubble are a good option if you, you can't afford to get a, a, a expensive professional printer. I would um, not really advise just using your crappy old, you know, office printer and trying to sell those. 
um, because I just I just think that um, the quality that you hold your artwork to, you know, your artwork deserves better than that. So don't just use a crappy, crappy printer. Anyways, I hope that clears it up for you a little bit. Um, again, do some research, see what's out there, see what fits your budget and um, what works for you best starting out. If you are just starting out, I definitely would recommend trying Society6 or Redbubble because their quality of prints is really nice and you can just direct people to that site. I think also, you may, I may have to check on this, but I believe that um, Society6 also offers wholesale. So if you want, they can give you a little price break if you wanna buy some yourself and sell them at conventions or whatever. So yeah, so there's there's the tea on the printing. So hopefully that helps you guys. I know that's a, a, a commonly asked question. So I, for personal experience, I have gone through a lot, a lot of trial and error with printing. So um, be a little patient with yourself. It takes a while to get, uh, to get them exactly how you want. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, so I'm almost done with this transfer. I'm doing the trees up here. And next up, I have a question from Logan W. Logan, cool, like Wolverine. You have a cool name. Okay, um, he asks, or she, I guess Logan can be a girl, right? Hi, Leilani. Okay, your art is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I want to paint now because you're so creative. I have two questions. Uh-oh, okay getting greedy. What's your favorite Starbucks drink and where do you get your ideas from? Like, do you have dreams and get ideas or do you look outside? Um, so I don't drink coffee. It's probably better that I don't because I'm a little hyper. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a tea drinker, actually. I don't, I, and a beer and a Michelada drinker, obviously. Um, I don't drink coffee because I'm I have a heart murmur and it makes my heart go like crazy and yeah, don't really like it. It gives me acid reflux. God, I sound like an old granny. Um, where do I get my ideas from? I'm sure I've answered this one before. Um, it's a little bit, as far as like where my ideas come from, it's a little bit abstract. Uh, it's hard to describe. A lot of people ask me this. Usually, you know, like this piece, you guys know, um, Many of my pieces are inspired by existing works, folklore, myth, uh, characters, etc. So that's, you know, things that um, speak to me personally that I find inspiring or interesting and I'd like to do my own interpretation of. Um, also, I think I mentioned this about my vampire girl that I just did. I don't, I think I, I talked about it on Art New Vogue. Um, but that one was one of the ones, I, I'm one of those people that like will lay in bed at night, like wide awake and like be thinking, well, this is why I don't drink coffee. Um, but I'll be laying in bed and I'll be like, oh my God, that would be so cool if I did this. And then sometimes I fall asleep and then I forget. So I should keep like a notebook or my phone next to the bed so I can write it down. Um, but sometimes, yeah, it, like images kind of just like form in my brain. Uh, so... <laughs> I don't know if that really answers your question, but that is kind of how they come to me. Okay, so let's time travel a little bit. I've filled in my background shape and I'm gonna do another transfer and then continue painting. Okay, so let's go back to the question. So I have a question from Martha M. And she asks, I recently had someone randomly message me and ask me to draw them. How would you suggest saying no politely? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> with a smiley face and a wink and a heart. Um, I, I have actually, I have a nice little um, canned answer for this that I, I have to use often. Um, I mean, sometimes it's just easiest to say, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. You know, I appreciate your interest in my work. However, I'm not currently accepting commissions and just leave it at that. Or just say, you know, I, due to whatever insert here um i am only accepting select commissions and um it's at my discretion whatever i don't know um i can uh 
I'll, I'll just, I can give you guys um, a link to um, a polite decline if you want here. Here, I'll put a, a link on my blog. I've got some nice little canned answers that I have to use sometimes. I, I often get, um, you guys probably know would expect, I often get people write me and they're like, oh, I'd like to commission you, blah, blah, blah. And they send me pages and pages of what they want. And then I give them a quote and they flip out and they're like, well, how could it possibly cost that much? Like, all I want is blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, you basically want 10 people, your entire family and your dog and all wearing princess outfits with bunny ears on. And uh, yeah, that would take me uh, months to do. So I have a nice little polite answer where I go, well, you know, I'm a professional artist. This, these are the rates that are fair and competitive in the field. If you're looking for um, something more to your budget, try DeviantArt. And I think that's kind of, you know, you're not being rude, but you're basically like, yeah, I don't work for um, uh, beans. So go find uh, a 13-year-old who doesn't mind drawing your family in cat suits or whatever you want. So anywho, <laughs> okay. So there, there you go, um, uh, Martha. Hopefully that will help you out. Um, oh, she also says, uh, I feel the things that you shouldn't say or ask of an artist video would be awesome. I would share it every day. I'm definitely working on that. I, I have, I have a lot of those, as you guys probably imagine. Um, one of them on my list to put in there <laughs> is very simple. And it's simply things that you should never say to an artist. You should, followed by anything. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like dude if you if you guys are an artist as, as well I'm sure that you get this all of the time and it's constantly people especially non-artists telling you what they think you should do with your career I get people constantly they're like oh I think you should make coloring books I think you should illustrate children's stories I think you should do a whole um book of animals and I'm just like I think you should mind your own business and I will take care of what I do and you worry about what you do. Um, I know most people don't, they don't mean anything by this, you guys. Like, I'm not trying to sound like a, like a jerk. Um, but I just feel like, I don't know why, like, maybe this is true in all professions. I guess I would have to ask somebody, but um, I just feel that when you tell people you're an artist, they automatically assume that you need some sort of career advice. And I just don't know why they make that assumption. Um, I get, they're like, oh, you should work at, uh, for, you should work at Pixar. Or you should do that. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll just go over there and knock on the door and be like, hi, um, someone told me I should come over here. So am I hired or what? <laughs> it does not work like that. So yeah, I'm sorry, but I find that super annoying. Um, also in that same boat, like not to offend any of you guys that watch my videos, but can you draw blog blank like just random requests like I find that these people never want to actually commission me or pay me they just want to see their idea realized and dude it doesn't work like that you want the service you gotta pay for it so yeah um, my, my email is sales at leilanijoy.com you want me to paint something let me know but actually, actually don't because my commissions are closed right now I'm too busy sorry <laughs> sorry about it um, anyways, okay, next up, I've got a question from Tamara G. And she asks, uh, la, da, da. Um, how do you go about making pricing for your prints on Etsy? Do you put a specific amount on top of the price it costs to print? And how do you come up with that figure? Uh, good question, Tamara. Actually, that goes along well um, with what I was talking about prints earlier. Um, basically, my feeling on that is um, see what your competitors are charging, you know, kind of like keep it fair to all of us out there that you're competing with. Um, because, uh, you know, if you like really, really lowball them, then it kind of makes the rest of us look bad. It's really weird. I'm hearing like a squeaky toy and outside and we don't have a dog. Okay, guys. Um, the paint along after dark is seriously getting creepy. <laughs> There's a ghost dog outside. Can you guys hear that? Okay, hold on. I'm gonna go investigate this and then I'll come back. Dude, okay, that was crazy. <laughs> it's Wild Kingdom in the yard right now. So, okay, let's, 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 let's
long story short, we recently had a little family of gray foxes that were like visiting our yard. It was so cute. So anyways, we got them, we went to the pet store and cause they like to like, they like to play with my like guinea pig toys that I left outside. So we got them this little um, squeaky like skunk toy and we put it in the yard, but they never really like played with it. Um, so it was just laying out there. And then I don't know if you guys could hear it on the mic or not, but the, something was going, something was going crazy on that squeak toy. So um, Brian and I just um, peeked out the window and there was an actual skunk playing with the skunk squeaky toy. And then a fox ran by and then the skunk chased the fox and then his tail was up and he was like dancing around and we're like, oh, so we shut the window really fast so we didn't get sprayed. <laughs> Dude, so, hey man, you never know what's going to happen on uh, the paint-along after dark. All right, anyways, where was I? Okay, I'm sorry, uh, sorry, Tamara, I was talking to you about the um, um, cost of prints. Um, so, uh, you should, I'm also going to send you a link to my FAQ page because I have a really nice uh, little um, cost analysis breakdown about, like, what you should charge for your work based on your time. There's, like, a whole little, like, formula and stuff that you can calculate this. So I'll send you over there uh, to do your homework and look at that. And then again, um, see what um, your your fellow artists are charging and, you know, price about in that range. You may have to do some adjusting. If you're brand new to it, you know, if you're new to selling your, your artwork and you don't, you know, you don't have much of a following yet, you're still kind of working on that, then charge a little bit less than the market price until you, you build up a following. You do obviously want to make sure that you're charging enough to, to make a profit. So, I mean, that should be easy enough for you to figure out. Calculate all your costs plus your time. Remember your time to, you know, put the prints on the board, sign them, bag them, whatever, ship them. I mean, that takes time. So add that in as well. Like, you know, figure out what, what hourly rate you want to make and then figure out how long it takes and then add that to uh, the the cost of goods, right, or cost of production and cost of the items that you, you're buying for resale. So there you go. There, there's an easy way to figure that out. Um, is that, was that your other question? Okay. And how do you come up with that figure? Well, I just explained that. Have a great day. There you go. Well done. All right. Next question comes from T. Gory. And T. Gory says that um, their current art space sucks. And they're asking me if my workspace has ever affected my mood, either positively or negatively. Also, Death Note is a great anime to watch. Hands down my favorite. Cool. I'll, I will try and look, look into that. Hopefully it's on Netflix because that's really the only way I'm going to find it. Um, oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, I am a big believer in uh, Feng Shui, right? Um, my, I think I kind of talked about this, uh, before, but when I had my apartment in San Francisco, I had like a very small room to work in and I actually, it was so small that if I had my desk up, I had the same desk I have now, which is like a, a tilting, like art, artist desk. Um, when I had my desk out, I couldn't walk around my bed. So like... I, if I was going to work, I had to put the desk down and then stay there and work. And then when I was done with it, I would have to clean it all up and put the desk away so that I could walk around to the other side of my bed. So it was really crazy because the space was so small. But you know what? I had to make it work because I couldn't afford a big fancy studio and that's all I had. And I still love to make art. So I'd make it really cozy. I had like a little TV. I had like a VHS, um, one of those... TVs that was like the VHS combo. So I'd watch old VHS tapes that I like and just get in my little cubby hole and uh, work. And I actually made the first few episodes of Art New Vogue in that tiny little space. So yeah, I mean, obviously it's great what I have now. I am so freaking lucky. I'm, I'm thankful every day that we have this great work studio that I can, you know, really feel creatively uh, free and so that's really awesome but yeah I know it can be very hard if you don't have a good area to work in but you know get creative with it you know go to Ikea get some organization stuff and uh, they've got these great little carts I have one and I just fill it up and push it under the desk and it saves space 
So there's a lot of good stuff that you can do and get creative with your space. But I definitely think that um, that's important for your um, creative ideas to flow freely. Actually, this is kind of weird. I was going to mention this. I just finished my Medusa painting, as you guys uh, know. Um, but after I finish a painting, I have to do like a studio cleanse. It's weird. Like when I'm in the process of painting, I tend to let my work studio get really messy. There's stuff everywhere, like paint, reference stuff. Like I just tend to let the, the room get really messy when I'm trying to finish a piece. And then afterwards, I kind of like find it um, rejuvenating to clean the studio, like clean my brushes, organize everything, and then I start a new piece. So I, I don't know, it's like kind of my ritual, I guess you would say. Okay, next up, I have a question from Aneth U. Hey, I was wondering if you could do a new self-portrait. I saw that one you did some time ago, and I love your work. So, like, a self-portrait of you as a character, like Sailor Moon or something. Like, that would be so cool. Um, what self-portrait are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I actually, I don't think I have done a self-portrait on Art New Vogue. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Did I? I saw the one you did some time ago. Mmm... I don't know. Honestly, I don't remember doing one. Maybe that was somebody else. So maybe you got me confused. I don't think I have done a self-portrait. Maybe I will, though. Um, I don't think I'll do one, like, as Sailor Moon. That doesn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think artists should do self-portraits. I think they're kind of a nice exploration. It's kind of nice to see how you see yourself. Uh, I think it's a good, good uh, exercise. I think that's why a lot of times they have us do those um in art school right um okay next i have a question from tony i why do you always have little pictures of your art next to it before you finish is that done on the computer or a small sketch okay um that is my color comp um i think i've talked to you i don't know i guess I've, i i was i thought that i explained that before um so part of the typical um, professional illustration process, um, which I'm going to be um, explaining this a lot in my online class, guys, um, which is coming along. Oh my god, it's getting close. I'm so excited. If you're a Kickstarter backer, I just posted an update, so go check it out if you want. Um, it has a little behind the scenes of uh, my class in progress and stuff. Uh, anyways, getting sidetracked. So, um, wait, what was I asking? Okay, yeah, the color comp. So what I do is typically, um, okay, I have one. I did one for this piece, but I didn't print it because I kind of um, memorized it. But what I usually do, like I said, is um, I do a thumbnail like this, and I scan this, and I take it into Photoshop, and then I very quickly just block in um, values and colors. So I like to do it this way because I don't like to do a lot of guesswork when I'm in the painting process. I'm doing a little bit of that right now because um, I don't have it next to me, but I'm kind of in a hurry. So, um, so typically I plot out all my colors before I actually start painting. It makes the, the painting process, process a lot smoother. And then you already know that your colors and values work together. So there's, you're not like guessing and trying to correct that as you go because that's that's can be super annoying and time consuming um i don't know some people like to free paint like i said some people are, are more truly fine artists i guess you would say i'm like i said i'm kind of a process artist i'm a little bit analytical with my process i like it that way i just feel like i'm more efficient i don't like to um try and f figure it out as i go i want to have a plan and then execute the plan um, so yeah, so I do I do those color comps It's just yeah, I do it again in Photoshop and print it and then I have a nice little guide to go by so that's what that is um, Next question is from some say exquisite Hey Leilani a friend and I have been inspired by your artwork. Yay <laughs> Since we were sophomores in high school. I oh wow. I, I don't know how long ago that was Oh, now we're both in college. Oh, man. Gee, oh, God. I've been doing this a while. <laughs> um, it was your watercolored hair that started it all. 
My question for you is, what is your opinion on Redbubble, similar to Society6? I, I, I answered this already. Um, I think it's really, yeah, I already answered this. So see question number one. Okay, thanks. Okay, next I have a question from Connor Likes Waffles. How do you capture the realism of a person's face in one of your drawings and make it recognizable to that person? I know you have gone into this on your Ramona drawing, which is beautiful. Oh, gosh, I feel like I'm... Uh... I don't know. I feel like my Ramona drawing is a little dated now, to be honest. Um, I wondered if you had any more tips or experience on the matter. Thanks for your inspiration. I hope to one day buy an original piece and take part in your online class. Oh, awesome. Connor likes waffles. I would love to have you. I like waffles, too. Um, so I'm probably not the, again, I probably, um, I'm not the best person to ask about this because, uh, as you might get, no, I don't do realistic um, portraits of, of, of people. I, I did. I mean, I did in college. I had to. Um, um, I guess my tip would be to observe carefully. Um, I guess, I mean, this is something that they kind of do go over in art school and grind it into your brain, but um, you kind of have to learn how to paint okay they say this all the time and it really is true is to paint what you see not what you think not what you think you see so like when you think about like you're like oh angelina jolie she has big lips well she does have big lips but what <laughs> and they're beautiful they're beautiful lips but what are the shapes that make up her lips i mean you really have to think a little bit more analytically so just don't say oh i'm gonna draw big lips because she has those um you want to actually think about what her lip shape is so my uh tip for you would be that when you're looking to do a portrait i mean a good a really good example of this is um caricature artists so look up some artists that do um, good caricatures and the reason why some caricatures are good and some are not so good is because the good ones know how to observe and they know how to um pick out the um, the things that make a person look the way they do and exaggerate those. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the, the key there is, I mean, if you're doing it realistically, you can still do it, but it has to be just a little bit more subtle. So, you know, if you're doing, you know, again, like Mick Jagger or something who has like a really big mouth, I mean, you want to kind of play that up cause that's what he looks like. That's what makes him look the way he does. So I would just say, be a, a careful observer. Um, and try to really analyze what you're seeing, how the light hits that person's face, um, the shapes that they're made up of. Um, and that'll really help you a lot. Again, I'm not like, I learned this stuff in school. It's been a while. Um, there are some really good books on this subject. So I would check that out. I had a really good um, book about um, portraits. I'll just, I'll put a, a little link to it right here because I, I don't remember the the name of it off the top of my head, but um, you can look it up there. That has some really good tips on um, portrait drawing. So give that a whirl. Okay, so you can see I've skipped ahead a little bit here. Um, and also, actually, I just wanted to show you guys this really quick. Um, this is for you, Tony. Here is my color comp that I was talking about earlier. I printed uh, printed this out to show you. Um, so you can see it, it's like, it's pretty crude. I basically just block some colors in just to see if they work together and I like the um, overall um, the look of it. Um, so yeah, so there you go. And also I wanted to show you guys eh, that um, I found this online, which is really, really helpful actually is um, there's this great website called moviesincolor.com and basically they um, do these really great little um, color swatches uh, and palettes of different movies. So if you're ever feeling stumped for um, color ideas, this is a really great website to get some um, color inspiration. And also it's really kind of like helping me with my process as well. Okay, so next question is from that one person. All right, that one person. Um, they ask, have you, uh, have you considered Periscope? That would be fun. 
Okay, so my next question comes from that one person and they ask, have you considered using Periscope? That would be fun. Um, I have, I have some friends that use that um, and really like it. I just, I don't, I don't know. I haven't really um, gotten into that because I started um, doing these, which is kind of fun. The reason why I haven't really done Periscope is because ugh, these brushes are, are not what I want right now. Um, you have to like the people watching kind of have to be like a available at that exact time and since I kind of paint like at weird times and like like when I'm only when I have a project um, there would be a lot of people like overseas you know Australia international that their their time zones are totally opposite so they would never be online when I'm online and I just kind of thought that doing the paint along type thing would be a little bit uh, better because then anybody can access it whenever they have time. So it's kind of like a live paint, but not really. And I can uh, edit out every time I burp and sneeze, which happens a lot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, I still I still may because I do think it's a cool um, platform. Um, next question comes from Monica, and Monica asks, did you ever enjoy painting realistic paintings? And why have you stopped painting in oil? By the way, love the paint-alongs. Thank, thank you, Monica. Um, that, that's a good question. Um, I would say that uh, I, I did realistic paintings that I, I liked. I, I liked the outcome of. Uh, I did some nice still life. So uh, my, my grandma loves still life. So she has like a bunch of my art school uh, paintings. But eh, I can't say that I enjoyed the process all that much. I really I mean, I felt like I, I never felt like I was saying anything with it. It wasn't really my voice. So to me, that was just never that appealing. I feel like some people um, really enjoy the the painting process so they don't they don't care so much about their message or whatever they just like you know like bob ross for example who loves to paint landscapes i mean he just feels the joy of painting right like it's not so much about that but i'm a little bit more about the storytelling about um um creating an impact a story um getting something out of it so yeah i guess that that's why i don't really enjoy painting realistically because that's just not me I mean, seriously, I, I live in a fantasy world. <laughs> um, why have I stopped painting in oil? That I can answer pretty quickly and easily. And that's just because um, it doesn't dry fast enough and it smells terrible. Um, like I said, like tonight, I got to got, have this painting done by tomorrow. So I don't have no time for an oil painting to be uh, drying and everything. Um... Yeah, I mean, there's things I do like about oil. I love how you can blend it um, forever, and that's really great. You can't really do that with um, acrylics. Uh, but I am considering experimenting with um, water-soluble oils, so who knows? We may see me kind of move in that direction. Right now, I just I don't want to buy all new paint, so that's why I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> all right, next up, I have a question from Mako. And she says, Hola Leilani, Portuguese fan. Awesome. A lot of, um, actually Portugal is the next place I want to visit after uh, we go to Japan and Thailand. I, I think I mentioned on a, a previous video that um, much, most of my family is Portuguese. I am a quarter Portuguese and my, my grandma is full, full Portuguese. So yeah, so I guess, uh, who knows, maybe we're related. Anyway, it's so great to hear from you. And Mako says, I really love your art and thank you for opening my mind to more than just ma manga and now I'm looking for my own style. Oh, that's awesome, awesome to hear. I, I, I hope that I might have you in my uh, online class. I, Cause you know, you guys always talk so much about or ask me about um, finding your own style. So I am, I am devoting an entire segment of my class to helping you um, uh, define and refine your own personal art style. So if, if you're, if you're in that, um, that zone too, where you'd like, um, maybe a little, uh, help and assistance with that, then please check out my class when it comes out. It's coming along really good. You guys, it's almost there. It's really getting there. So I'm going to have it soon enough. 
Um, anyway, sorry. Um, Mako asks, do you know the Adams family? Oh my God, of course. Of course I know the Adams family. Um, Wednesday, Adams is basically my alter ego. I don't know if you guys know that. She's kind of like my, she's like my, uh, spirit fictional character. Um, when I, when I was eight years old, I dressed up as, uh, as her for Halloween. I think I mentioned this before, but, uh, here I'll show you guys the, a little picture. Um, I was so proud of my Wednesday costume and I went to school and everyone was like, oh, how cute, you're a pilgrim. And I'm like, do you want to play a game? And they're like, sure. And I'm like, it's called, is there a God? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's super frustrating. I was a little goth eight-year-old and nobody got it. But yeah, I love it. Um, actually, uh, Christina Ricci is kind of like one of my long-term girl crushes. I, I just, I kind of adore her. Oh, oh, there was this picture of her recently circulating the, the interwebs, and it was her dressed as um, Morticia Adams, and I was like, oh my god, I love this so much. Then I heard, I found out that the, the picture was actually fake, it was a Photoshop job, but I'm just like, I don't, I still don't care. I love this, I love this image. Um, she should do it for real. Uh, anyways, okay, she also, oh, she's got some more questions for me. Um, what is your fa uh, favorite favorite character? Well, I already answered that. What do you think about 90s movies? Love 90s movies. I'm a child of the 90s, basically. So, yeah, love them. Uh, which Greek god or goddess would you want to be the daughter of? <laughs> uh, the wine one. <laughs> What's the one that drinks all the wine? Dionysus. <laughs> yeah, all right. That'll be, that'll be mine. Okay, so I'm thinking, because um, I'm running out of time here, um, that I'm going to do for the last set of questions, that I'm going to do a little uh, speed round. So, I don't know, you guys think that will be fun? Well, let's see, we're going to get we're gonna get crazy on the paint along after dark. Um, so, how about a minute? How long do politicians get, like, in those debates? Something like a minute or something? So, let's see. Okay, Siri... Siri, open timer. All right, we're gonna have Siri's gonna be the uh, the mediator here, so she's gonna keep us on track. Okay, so we got a minute set. All right, and so for the rest of the questions, I'm gonna have one minute to answer, and that is it. And so, I mean, if you have a really lengthy question, I might have to skip over you, and I'll I'll do it in another one, so I don't I don't uh, um, you know uh, you don't what what the hell am I trying to say? So you don't uh, miss out on a high quality answer. Um, okay, so first first question comes from Ryan F. And he asks, I have a very small room and I have lots of art stuff. I need to store it. And I was wondering if you had any tips on storage for a small space. P.S. You look adorable in this video. Love the hair. <laughs> well, I'm assuming you're talking about my previous video because I'm looking a little, oh Jesus, I'm looking a little haggardy. Well, it is like freaking the middle of the night. So sorry about it. I can't look glamorous all the time. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, yeah, my tip is I don't even need a minute. Go to Ikea. Ikea, great place for organizing. Yay, there you go. Okay, that place is awesome. A lot of my stuff is from Ikea, actually. This is this is a spice rack shelf from Ikea that I spray painted, and it is like the best bookshelf ever. So there, there you go. Get on it. All right, uh, George Z asks... Uh, I'm a young artist in middle school and I work in colored pencils. I was wondering if you had any tips for shading. Um, any tips on shading in general? Okay, go, one minute. Buy a shading pencil, done. Okay, <laughs> sorry George, no, but seriously. Uh, Prismacolors makes a really nice, it's called a shading pencil, and it, or a blender, I'm sorry, it's called a blender. And you can use it to help uh, blend your colors together. It's like a kind of like a clear neutral one it works pretty good I, I like it um so recommend that uh okay next up we've got uh wait next up we've got erica v erica v asks hi leilani i can't help but notice that you are using fluid acrylics in your recent work that i am i, I love those actually a really big fan of them they're very ink like which i like um, okay, I was wondering if those paints give a three-dimensional texture. Uh, in your videos, they look like they dry in a puddle form on your surface. Okay, one minute. Yes, they do, kind of. Um, it depends how thick you mix it. Um, if you mix it with, like, pouring medium or something like that, you can make it 3D, you can get it really thick. 
or if you just use it like straight out of the um, the bottle. Um, let me show you one. Oh, I don't have long. Uh, this oh crap. This one's empty. Uh, so you can hear it's really, really liquidy. That will be thin. That will spread out and it will be uh, basically the same. Uh, it will be even on your surface. But it depends like if you want to mix it with mediums or stuff. Uh, yeah. So there you go. Okay. Done. 20 minutes or 20 seconds to spare. Okay. Victor S. asks, would you rather go back in time and relive a moment or change it and, or go to the future and see where you are in uh, in the next 10 to 20 years? So go back in time and relive a moment and change it or go to the future and see where you are in 10 or 20 years. One minute on the clock. Uh, I think for real, I don't really want to know what my future is. Uh, that could be scary. I, I would rather not know, especially if something bad happens. And then if something good happens, that kind of takes the surprise out of it. So I definitely think I'd probably go back to uh, the past. Uh, I don't know. I'd probably go back to high school and like stand up to someone who was mean to me or something like that. Um, actually, I uh, I was a big journaler in high school. You, I highly recommend um, writing like a daily journal in high school and stuff like that, because it is so fun to go back and read them. Like now that I'm thirty, it's so fun to to go back and um, see what an idiot I was. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and uh, so yeah, I'd probably go back to high school and tell this stupid girl stop being a jerk to me I don't know stand up for myself something like that so yeah past okay uh let's see next I've got um last question last question guys it comes from Blake B and Blake B asks sorry for flooding the comments but I was wondering how to get uh more original art Every time I get an idea, I get reference photos, and my final piece just looks like a collage of all the references. And when I use no reference photos, my piece turns out bland and dry. What do I do? Oh, Blake, that's a great that's a great question. Um, I definitely feel you on that. I can I know exactly what you're what you what you mean by that. Sorry, boyfriend has cold and he's blowing his nose extremely loudly. He's in the other room. He's in there playing Destiny, which looks like fun. And I'm just in here painting and it sucks. Okay, sorry, Blake. So to answer your question, um, I'm going to give you a, a fantastic piece of advice that I actually can't even take credit for because uh, I heard it. I heard it somewhere else. Um but I, this was uh, a couple years ago, I was at um, Spectrum Fantastic Art Live, which is a really cool art convention, and um, Ian McCaig was giving a speech. If you guys don't know who Ian McCaig is, you should definitely uh, look him up as soon as we're done here, because he's like, just a master of masters. I, I don't know, he's awesome. Uh, um slight boastful brag here I've actually gotten to hang out with him a few times because uh, we have um, uh, my boyfriend Brian's a concept artist and so is Ian McKeg so we have some mutual friends and we've all got to hang out and go to dinner with him and he's he's just so he's awesome cool fun and also a master artist anyways he offered some incredible advice on this very subject and he said that when you get an idea the first thing you should do is do a drawing. Just do a drawing. Don't do any research. Don't look up any art that's already been done. Just draw. Just draw out the idea. Um, and then once you have that, the second step is then you're going to do a researched photo reference drawing. Um, it's, you know, I recommend if you can take your own photo reference of yourself or a friend or, you know, if whatever your subject matter is, I, th I think that it just has more originality already because, um, you know, Blake, like you're saying, sometimes it's hard to get away from the photo reference and a lot of times, fo well, all the time, photos are copyright to the photographer, so you definitely don't want to be just straight up copying that. Slight sidebar, I saw an artist on Instagram recently, I'm not going to name names, but 
he was like stealing people's photos like suicide girls and stuff like that and just um doing you know really realistic they were nice paintings but he wasn't even giving any credit to the photographers or the models and i just thought that was really shady you know whatever that wasn't your idea dude i mean you copied it directly uh, sorry so sidetrack Anyway, so step two uh, on Ian McKaig's uh, creating original art method is you do a researched study. So do a study from photo reference. And then the third step is you're going to do an entirely new drawing um, combining both your first and second drawing. So take the energy of your first drawing and some of the research that you did from the second drawing and do a whole new drawing. And that should really kind of bring it all together. Um, the other thing uh, that I personally like to do, and like I said, uh, kind of already said this earlier, um, but for this piece in particular, when I did this little thumbnail, I mean, obviously it is rather crude, you know, or primitive, childlike even, but I liked it. It has like a certain energy to it that I really liked. So I wanted to maintain that. So what I did was, and this is something you guys can do too, is I blew up, um, I blew up the thumbnail big, and then I um, did my drawing on tracing paper on top of uh, on top of that. So I kind of got the placement and sort of the um, the energy of you know these nice um, lines here that were in the thumbnail, and I created a more refined drawing um with that so that can that can really help um kind of um that process yeah because i definitely i i hear you and it's really good that you are aware of it actually because i feel like some artists they're like oh i really like this photo so i'm just gonna basically copy it exactly and then call it my own and it's like well that wasn't really your original idea you got that from another source so Definitely, you know, implement this process, you guys, if you're one of those people that really stays close to your photo reference. I recommend you trying to break out of that a little bit because it's just, um, you know, you don't want to get um, too too dependent on it. All right, guys. Well, I still got a, a ways to go. <laughs> a ways to go before I sleep. Um, but yeah, uh, that's all the time I think I have for the questions. And I actually, yay, I think I actually got through all of them that I wanted to. I know I'll have some more next time. Anyways, if you want to ask a question, please um, post it in the comments below. If this isn't my most recent paint along, then go find the recent paint along and comment on there because I'll be getting the questions from my most recent paint along. Okay, kids, well, I gotta work all night and then hopefully I'll have this painting ready for the auction tomorrow and you guys can get a print of her or take her home with you and uh yeah so that's it for me okay uh if you guys are pulling an all-nighter too keep at it i feel you i'm with you i'm with you in spirit all right hopefully i get to sleep soon <laughs> all right good night guys see you later on another episode of the paint along or maybe we'll do paint along after dark again i don't know we'll see see what happens all right later Thank uh you. -huh.